Welcome to the new version of Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast, the podcast for real estate agents everywhere. I'm Lisa B and together with Beyond Kunzel, we're going to talk about everything real estate. We talk about what's working, what's not working, what's new, what's old, technology and anything else to do with real estate. We'll answer your questions from the Facebook group Let's Talk About Real Estate. So if you have a question, we can help. Join the Facebook group today and again, welcome to the show. Beyond Council, welcome back to the Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast. Lisa, good to see you once again. Good to be here. And today I'm very excited because we have a special guest with us, Tony Lawson. Woo! Welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks Thank for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Okay, before I ask you, Tony, Beyond, tell me what it's been like to have Tony uh, join you there at South Australia EXP. Uh, it's fantastic. Tony is an energetic bundle of joy. He cares about his customers. He really has that EXP work ethic embedded in his soul. And he is an absolute guru when it comes to production. This guy is all over YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and he understands the value of good content. He's a producer, used to be working in radio with some very big programs such as the Kyle and Jackie O show. And uh, he's got a wealth of knowledge and experience about putting together really good content. So the first thing I noticed when Tony joined us was that he came out the blocks running. There was TikTok videos, Facebook, Instagram, just every single day there was Tony just appearing in our feed. And people were saying to me, who is this Tony guy that's just come out of nowhere and now I just can't get rid of the guy. He's just everywhere. So uh -huh. Tony, you've done, you've, you've made an impact, mate, in a very short amount of time. So well done. Absolutely. Thanks, and I saw some of the marketing. I'm like going to beyond. Look at his marketing. How awesome is this? Yep. So now, now Tony, you tell us about you. And I know you um, you lived in Wollongong, my hometown for a while as well. So, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Yeah, give us your background. So background, um, got into radio when I was very young. My mum was in radio. So I joined, got into production, was involved in all kinds of media. Uh, yeah, when I was 20, left left my hometown of Mount Gambier, went to Perth, uh, met a guy called Kyle Sandlins, and then I just followed him around Australia, eventually to Sydney, and then we launched this big show, and uh, then, I, then I went along and, and launched a heap of uh, other radio networks, in fact, most of the uh, big radio networks, so that was my job uh, as a producer, wow. I used to produce all the, yeah, all the big promos, all the cool stuff, not the, the ads, but like all the cool, you know, mashups and uh, all the big million dollar promos and things like that. Um, yeah, and in between, did voiceovers, did a bit of TV, and um, found myself uh, during COVID going, yeah, I'm a bit over that. I want something new. So, and uh, yeah, that's that's when it all changed. Wow. And so radio has been been your life up until real estate. How many years have you been in real estate now, Tony? Uh, I would say nearly two years. I unofficially joined in March of 21, but officially joined in June. Yeah, it feels like it feels like nearly two years. Now, I understand you started out in a a, a sales assistant role, I guess is what you could call it, with a yep. franchise um, yep. before coming over to us. And you've been with us for four, four months now. But yep. the numbers that you've managed to produce um, as a what we would call a, a new agent or a fresher agent to the industry I think yep. 15 listings and you're coming up to yep. like your seventh or eighth sale already yep. within the first yep. four months. Tell us about that. How have you gone from zero to mind my terminology hero in such a short period of time? What is the secret formula that has got you listing these properties with these clients as a newer agent over some well-established yep. agents in those particular areas that have been dominating yep. their marketplace for decades, but you've yep. come in and you've won the business You've sold yeah. the properties and you seem to be taking off really, really fast. How has that come about? Tell us tell us the secret. Well, I don't know the secret. I, I actually feel like a bit of an imposter, to be honest, because I'm I I'm just I'm I'm following some rules, but I'm not following some rules in the sense that, you know, I'm I'm not being salesy, but I'm being a little bit salesy. So I'm trying I'm what I'm really trying to do in my in my presentation is to not be that sales guy. I'm really trying hard to not be cliche. And and I think that really resonates with with people who are looking to sell their house. Because we all know that in the marketplace there's this thing that this this film that sits over the industry that's like, oh real estate agents are this and that. 
And and I guess in every industry, and it is every industry, there's always a few bad apples that ruin it. So for me, I'm just there to help, to be not salesy, just to listen and just be be the guy they like, you know, create the rapport, but also the person they go, well, this guy clearly knows what he's doing. We trust him. We like him. Let's work with him. And also a really good deal doesn't go astray as well. Well, I yeah. guess you can offer those really sharp deals now that you're with EXP because you're retaining 100% of your commission and it's only costing you 27640 a year to be in the company. So I guess you're competing as a business owner now rather than yeah. um, as a sales associate as to speak. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I think absolutely. you do. I think you. I think you have hit the nail on the head with the secret, and the secret is to not be a salesperson, but to help people. Um, yeah. You're not trying to sell people; you're trying to help people. So you've 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 grasped that concept and you've ran with it, and and it's working because that's what people want at the end of the day. They they've got a, a problem that needs a solution, and they yeah. want to deal with somebody that's likable, that's trustworthy, and someone that's competent. Yeah. And <clears throat> you're definitely all three of those. So well done, mate. You've done really well in such a short short period of time. Uh -huh. And and your videos, like they're not salesy, they're entertaining, they're a little bit cheesy, they're funny, they're cute, you know, yeah. and you've probably learnt that from your time in, in media as well. So that's that's why your marketing's so great. So your your vendors are definitely gonna be benefit from that, aren't they? Oh, I hope so. Absolutely. Give it what I got. For sure. So, so, so Tony, just just um before Lisa asks you another question, how have you found that transition from coming from a franchise? to obviously going out on your own pretty much as big. I know you've got the support of all 43 of us EXP agents, but you are your own boss. You are your own man. You can do your own things. Yeah. Now, have you found this transition? Because a lot of people don't make that move because of fear, because they're scared yeah. of the unknown. What, yeah. what, what have you experienced yourself? Has yeah. it been scary? Has it been daunting? Has it been exciting? Has it been fun? Has it been a breeze? Has it been a challenge? Tell us a bit about the transition. I have to say that it's a mix of easy and hard. So it was easy okay. because I really sit well in, in this kind of hustle environment. I like that because what I'm doing is I'm comparing myself to everyone else in the room. So I just look around and I go, okay, what's making you tick? What's making you tick? And then I just essentially copy it, right? Because that's that's the key to success is, is, is copy those who are successful. This is not rocket science. It's actually pretty basic. Um, the thing I found difficult coming over was the fact that I didn't get much training, ironically, in a franchise. Um, and and the reason why is because I imagine maybe uh, I was really good at bringing leads in and uh, someone wanted to be the star and that star wasn't going to be me in that situation. So I kind of felt like when I got into EXP that, that I could shine. I could like I could just open my wings and fly. That's exactly how I felt because I knew I knew what wasn't working, but uh, and I, know, I knew what would. But then I could try it out, and I tried it with EXP, and it worked. With well, EXP, you're not put into a box like you are in some of the franchises. So somebody like yeah. you, who's creative and whatever else, you can you you've more or less not got free reign, but you know you have you you can. Yeah. Let creative juices flow and 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 market yourself and your owner's properties you know that the way that you know how to do and and from your background in in media of course you know how to do it so for the franchises to to not let people do that it, it just it you know it, it's just mind-boggling you know it is yeah it's, it's skeptical. a level of were you skeptical of EXP at all first, Tony, when you first heard about it? Or did you think this is the model, this is the way of the future? I knew it was the model of the future. So I've always liked models like this. But, you know, I think when we grow up, we, we hear of other models that work for other things. Like it might be, you know, it might be healthcare, it might be cosmetics, it might be whichever. And it works really well for those people who are already in it. But for those who are coming in and they see that opportunity, it's like, well, I'm not really into that. I'm not really into that. For me, mm -hmm. EXP is 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 the no-brainer for real estate agents because you're already in real estate. You can't really really describe something to someone who's not a real estate agent and bring them into this thing. Here, what we're doing. Um, for, if you if anyone's a real estate agent and they're doing really well, it's like, well, all right, why are you handing fifty or sixty or forty percent of your commissions to someone else? Like you could literally double your wage and and work half as 
you know, work that hard and change your life. So, so for me, when, when it was presented to me by, it was Bory and Cullen. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, but I had to keep a top secret, you know, not because they told me, but because I just felt that I was, a little, you know, I was cheating on them a little bit, like cheating on, uh, on where I was working. But the truth was, I just realized that this is ridiculous. Why would I be doing what I'm doing with them when I can be free and do it with by myself and with an awesome team? It just makes sense. It made sense to me at the time. I was never skeptical of it. I think the the, um, the loyalty that some people have to a boss is is very honourable and it's very very respected. But sometimes it's fear in disguise. Like I'm happy where I am. My boss is fantastic. They're really great. They're awesome. I've got a good workplace environment. I think a lot of those things are actually excuses to say I'm scared of making a move. Yeah, now, I know yeah. when I made the move, it was a bit of a scary transition. I've gone from a wage to no wage to being commission only to a company that no one had ever heard of. Yeah. Did you experience that same little bit of fear? Like there must have been some fear there before you actually jumped. There must have been yeah. something that was like a little bit like I'm taking a risk here. Yep. Is this going to be a payoff or not? Did you have yeah. any of those emotions? I did. I had a lot actually because um, I was. It was a decision I made because of a variety of things that had happened, and so I, I wrote that. I wrote that message that everyone has written at one point in their life, and I'm sitting there with my thumb over the send button, uh, and then my thumb was shaking, and I hit send. I'm like, well, that's it. I've done it. And then what it was for me was I knew at that point over the next few months I wasn't going to have a regular income. I was going to be commission only. But in my head, I, I had it worked out. I knew that if I got through the first two months or three months, then everything was going to be wonderful. And it was. But those few months, if and especially because I didn't have uh, all the savings, everyone, I had to be really frugal. I had to be really smart. So I gave it every. I thought, well, what have I got to lose? Nothing. Give it everything. You know, and even... Even when I was doing my appraisals, I, I, I never wanted to be that that agent that was desperado, that was, you know, um, you know, trying to egg someone on to so because I just didn't want that vibe. I'm going out my own, this is my brand, I'm not a salesy, pushy guy, I'm just here to help. And that is exactly what got me over the line. Yeah. It is that's what worked. Um being being a desperado and an agent, people smell it like, you know, like a Mission. Like a dog smell. They smell it. They're like, you're desperate. I don't trust you. Yeah. And that's and, and I knew that from the beginning. And uh I wasn't um I wasn't gonna be that. And that's what worked for me. Good. All right. For some someone that's sitting on the fence looking at possibly joining EXP and worried about where to start, what's what what would be your blueprint or your plan of how you started? Like how did you transition from where you were? into exp i mean you've said you've said a fair bit there but yeah yeah, any yeah I know what you, mean. you know is there any additional tips for someone that's like i, I just i'm in this office now i don't know how to leave and i don't know how to start the next one i can easy there's never a good time mm -hmm. there's never a good time you can wait for the right time but there won't be a right time because it's like a toxic relationship uh when you're in a toxic relationship like or a toxic workplace you go, things are going to get good, things are good. And they might get good. They might be feel good for a little bit. And then it goes to crap again. And then you go, oh, you know, and it's almost like those little good bits, you, you, you artificially inflate them and stretch them over the bad things. And it's like, that that's not logical. And it doesn't make sense. So, for example, if you're, let's just say you're on a wage and you're on $60,000 a year, right? And you're working ridiculous hours. It's like, what if I said to you that you could be making five times that? at your current rate or whichever. And, and, and even, even when you explain that to people, it's almost too, too, it's too unbelievable. It's like, what do you mean? So, so, cause I was talking to Bori, Bori son about this too. And it's like, people are afraid of their own success. Mm. And I, I really believe that. I believe fundamentally people are afraid of their own success because I, I think people don't feel like they deserve 300,000, right? It was like, well, you're selling 30 houses a year. So why wouldn't you deserve that? And it's like, oh, you know, because I've got my rent to pay, I've got my mortgage, plus, you know, I've got this over here and I've got my money tied up. It's like, man, man. It's like, so for me, it's, there's never a good time. So just do it. 
and then deal with it as you go. And then trust me, right? If you're as good as you believe you are and you're as good as you are on paper already, you're going to be fine. Just trust yourself. Yeah. That's what that's, the, that's what I did anyway. But I actually didn't know how to trust myself because I actually hadn't technically sold houses by myself. So I literally took the ultimate risk. I took a risk and I did it and I believed it, believed I could do it. So so there are agents out there who are selling 100 houses a year, right? And they'd be like, no, nah, not going over there. I'm comfortable where I am. It's like, what? A desk is worth 150,000 bucks? <laughs> what? Someone's yeah. desk, a light globe <laughs> and a phone where you're taking the, the phone calls, the phone they'll keep, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. like, do it or don't do it. I reckon jump every day of the week. So you've come from not selling any real estate, bringing in the leads as a sales associate and doing yep. some of the other administrative duties. Yep. A lot of people think there's no support at EXP. I want you to tell people the support that you've had from the Team EXP SA team, myself, Chris Jansen, and the rest of the team, Lisa B., the yep. Glenn Twiddles, everybody in EXP Australia. What has been the support levels like? And be brutally honest. Be very yep. critical about it. Don't yep. fluff it up. If it's been crap, yep. say it's been crap. If it's been oh, really well. good, tone it down a bit. Don't don't over exaggerate it. We want to hear the real <laughs> rugged roar. How yeah, yeah. You found it from an agent that's never sold a property before to come yep. over that's now sold seven within the first four months or whatever and listed fifteen. Yep. Yep. Has that been all Tony Lawson, or has that been the backing no. of the team and the support no. of the team? Oh no, gosh, no! I couldn't do all this by myself. Um, I lean heavily heavily on the team. I lean very much on the conveyances. I lean on the EXP team. I lean on everyone. I wouldn't be anything I am if it wasn't for everyone else. I, I couldn't be anything if it wasn't for everyone else because I don't know what everyone else knows. Again, I, I'm new. So so I, you know, if I have a question, I just throw it to the EXP SA messenger team. Bang, get an answer. Bang, get an answer. Not at one or two o'clock in the morning, which sucks when I sometimes need that. <laughs> but everyone's sleeping, they're living their awesome lives. But but the thing is, is that I can ask anyone anything. Uh, I, I get reminders sometimes, oh, Tony, you need to update this section here in Agent Box. Oh, okay, cool. You know, and, and the thing is, and this is with anything, it's like when you're learning to drive, what, you're just a perfect driver as soon as you get your P's? He's like, no, you're going to learn stuff on the road. So 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 it's really about, getting on the road and driving and that's what i say what what exp is it's like if you're an agent and you kind of know you've got what it takes but you're stuck in an, in an agency that isn't letting you thrive like what have you got to lose like what you're gonna you're gonna stay on 50 like at the end of the year you're gonna have fifty thousand dollars or you can have 300 or 200 right it's gonna whatever it is even if you're like the shittest agent ever you're still gonna sell enough to make more than what you're on right now that's how i see it like it well, you've already done that, Tony, with your seven yeah. sales. Now, it might take another couple of months for that to come in. So let's just say by the time that money comes in, that's been six months, right? But that's still 70, 80, 90 odd grand right there in commissions, which is more than what you were earning in the whole previous 12 months. So one thing I've learned is risk equals reward and that you don't talk yeah. to anyone who's an entrepreneur or anyone who's highly successful that says, yeah, I just worked in my nine to five and I worked my way up the ladder and that's how I become a Jeff Benzos. Or I worked myself, yeah. I went to school and I did my university degree and I did my diploma and I did yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir, and I worked yeah. for my boss and now I'm Bill Gates. Or yeah. I did this and I did that and now I'm Steve Jobs or now I'm Elon Musk. Every single one of these entrepreneurs, <clears throat> whether you like them or you don't like them, they're all risk takers. They're all... Yeah people that have actually backed themselves and had the kahunis to go out there and give it a crack. And I'll tell you what, mate, what you're doing is definitely on the right path. And I don't think you're just, with your analogy about driving, I don't think you're just driving in the 60s zone, mate. I think you're on the freeway already. Yeah. To be clear. I feel like it, mate. I, I feel like it. I feel like I've sold two houses. I feel like I'm, I'm about to sell another two, but two houses last week sold. This week, I, I reckon I'll finish off another two. I just signed up one tonight. It's like I signed up one Monday. Um, I feel like they're falling out of the sky. I, you know what it feels like? It feels like the tree is ripe and the fruit is falling off. That's that's, that's so what it's cool. like. And, and, and when you're in that zone and that energy uh, and, and, and you're really in that kind of uh, place where you're helping people, what happens is people see that. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people respond to it. It's the energy you put out into the world. 
it, it's it's a feedback loop. So I feel like I'm in that feedback loop now. I'm in that channel and I'm doing work for people and people are going, this guy works, this guy helps, go with him. And then you get handed another one and another one. Yeah. I think that's how it goes. And your energy. Now, apart from your, <clears throat> so apart from your social media marketing, which I know you're doing a lot of, when you go out there to a customer's house, are you bringing with you, do you have this you you whiz bang presentation, this scripted, this, you know, preemptive uh, thing with nah. all these flashy bits and pieces that nobody else has got? Or are you nah. just being yourself and just taking that EXP spirit with you yeah. to the That's client's it. house to then show yeah. them that you're there and that you've got yeah. a team that can back them to get the listings? Absolutely. I'm not going in there with salesy talk. That is literally on my, my pamphlets. No salesy talk. I don't do it. I don't even really talk about, um, you know, at, at some point we do talk about the house. But probably for the first forty percent of the, the time, well, how you going? Oh yes, what's the plan? Um, oh yeah, what are you doing? Oh, this is this. Oh, that's my dog. La la la. I'm I'm getting to know them. I'm becoming their friend, uh, and I'm not becoming their friend like you know. There are people in the world that go, oh, look in eyes, handshake, compliment shoes. You know, I'm not doing it like that. I'm doing yeah. it. As, yeah. You know, I'm not. I don't need. Yeah, you, know, you, you can't go in that. People read it. People know when you're a mannequin. Mm -hmm. People know. Not being a corny 1980s salesperson. Yeah. Wow, you've got a T-shirt on. I love the T-shirt. Where'd you buy yeah. that from? Oh, I'm going to go there yeah. and get one tomorrow. No, that rubbish. Yeah. It's Pointed all genuine. The wall. Stupid. Yeah, I'm with genuine you. Genuine rapport. Yeah. Genuine rapport. You know, if they're going, like, it's like you've got you to uh, really be able to feel where they're coming from, right? It's, it's, it's not, you're not there to... This, this is the irony. This this is the juxtaposition. You're not there to make money, right? You're there to help them, right? And if you're going in there to make money, your whole focus is money. Wrong. You will lose. Wrong. You are not getting that. And if you do get it, you won't get a great review. Something will happen because it's toxic and wrong. You need to go in there to help because if they feel like you're doing it for the money, they're going to be like, huh, typical real estate agent. I'm not a typical real estate agent. I'm there to help. I, I like um, drove. We, I, I drove uh, um, the buyer of a uh, house in Elizabeth North today. Drove it to the place. Then I drove it to Mawson Lakes. She's like, "Oh my god, you don't have to do it." It's like, no trouble, no trouble. It's like uh, I bought curtains for the um, for the Perry Bar Road house I sold in in Hallett Cove. No trouble. Here you go, free curtains. You know, I like to give nice gifts. I like to to. It's even you just give without anything. It's like all right, because because it's going to come back to me down the track somehow, somewhere. So yeah, it's all right. I like it's doing a true, that. It's a true EXP spirit. I mean, one of our agents was talking to me today, Marco, saying that he went to a house for a photo shoot and nothing was organised in the morning. So they spent him and Bury spent four hours cleaning the house, moving yep. around furniture, doing a whole heap of things that aren't their responsibility to get yep. this particular vendor moving forward because they weren't in a state to be able to do those things themselves. These yep. are the little extra things, I think, and you've really mastered this. It's the little things that you do that is nothing to do with marketing. It's nothing to do with false promises. It's nothing to do yep. with anything flashy. It's just, I truly care and I'm here to help. And yep. if you need this assistance right here, right now, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and do that for you. I'm going to drive you to the next appointment if you need to because you don't drive yep. a vehicle. I'm going to solve that problem for yep. you. I'm going to yep. clean the house for you, Bab. Now, I'm not saying we clean houses and we do all these extra things, but all I am saying is that the EXP spirit is to go above and beyond and to put the customer first and to help yep. other people. And sometimes it involves things that aren't within our job description and other agents won't do that and they'll refuse to do that. But we always say amongst our team, if your sole purpose is to help another person, the world will reward you with 50 times more than anything that you could ever imagine in your wildest dream. And I think, Tony... You've yep. really, really grasped that concept and it's really great to see you with all the successes that you're having now. And I'm interested in doing a, another year interview for with, with yeah. Lisa with well, you in 12 months' time to get some numbers together of actually what you have actually achieved, mate. So well done. You're on the right path and it's an absolute pleasure to have you in the team. Thanks, man. I love being here. <laughs> and I'm going to send a Zoom link for 12 months today and then we'll jump on a Zoom in 12 months. <laughs> And you know what? I really love that too because what what I think these podcasts will do for 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 the the guys that are coming in as well, and it definitely does it for me because I do one with Chris Jansen as well. Is like it holds you accountable. 
we're going to record you in three months. We're going to record you in 12 months. And we're, but it's not like a KPI. It's not like you're going to be brought in front of your boss. What it is, you're working for you. So you're really competing against yourself. And I reckon that's the best kind of competition to have. Absolutely. All right. So for anybody else sitting on the fence looking at joining EXP, is there anything you'd like to say to them? Um, do you like giving away half your commission? What, <laughs> why would you do that? Yeah. That's, that's really the question. Like, why would you look over here to EXP where you can, you know, keep a hundred percent when you can, when, while you're giving away 50%, I, I don't know, understand why you're doing it. There's obviously a reason, but there's a better one. Good. And I'm going to cut out that little bit and we're just going to use that as a little snippet for EXP. That's one of our little ads. All right, no. so anyone watching this would like to reach out to Tony about joining, um, you can help them not only with their their marketing, their, you know, sort of media side of things, um, the transitioning, you've only just done it, so you'll be able to help them hold their hand through what they need to do to, to get to EXP. So if anybody's interested, please reach out to Tony and I'll put your details underneath the video as well. So thank you so much for joining us today, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Cheers. And I think I think if anybody does need some assistance with TikTok, social media, Facebook, Instagram, and you really want to get that avenue of your business down pat, you'd have a really big benefit in contacting Tony Lawson here, who's a production genius, and, and joining with EXP with Tony as your sponsor because Tony could give you a lot of value, and I'm sure that you'd be more than happy for anybody that joined in with you, Tony, that wasn't good at those things, maybe even to do those things for them initially in the beginning, to get them Absolutely. up and running to help them. Yeah, yep. anytime, anytime. This has been my career. It's what I've done all my life. I'm always here to help. Good. Always, always giving, mate. I love it. I'll put some links to your videos as well. So thank nice. you so much, Tony. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have a question about real estate, then please join the group on Facebook, also called Let's Talk About Real Estate. For those of you who are interested in EXP, please join us at 10 a.m. Brisbane time every Wednesday morning for EXP Explained. Thank you again for joining us and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and see you next week.